All right, we are live in three, two, one. Awesome. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited to host Abdul Alyamani, PhD student at Cardiff University. I have been following his uh, work for a while. I read his research papers and I thought it would be great to have him on the show and share his research work and the process behind it, like how it was developed, what were the challenges, and it would be a really good story. And also, it's rare to find like PhD who are doing machine learning and architecture research work. So I would uh, like to know his thoughts and how can other people do the same? And so can't wait for this uh, amazing technical interview. Thanks, Abdul, for your time to do this. Thank you, Mario, for your interviews. I'm really happy to have you. Yeah. So Abdul, uh, can you give us like some highlights about your professional and academic journey till date? Uh, so uh, I start in 2011 as a landscape architecture. I get my uh, baccalaureate degree in landscape architecture and uh, in USA and in, in uh, sorry, Saudi Arabia. And then I moved to uh, uh, USA in 2016. I get uh, my uh, 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 master degree in Mark in uh, SciArc, uh, which is uh, really a uh, uh, good school into design and, and uh, machine thinking and uh, architecture thinking. Uh, and then now I'm doing my uh, PhD under uh, Wasim Jabi Supervision in uh, Wells School of Architecture, Cardiff University. Uh, and hopefully we'll graduate uh, next year. I'm in writing up dissert the dissertation now. So uh, yeah, one more year and we will be graduate. Awesome, that's exciting. And like I foresee like people from students from SIAC, like they produce amazing representation and are always ahead in experimenting with tech. So I'm, I'm curious to know like how was your life at SIAC? How busy was it? How is your PhD life? What, what are the main differences you see? It's totally different. Uh, SIARC school, it's about uh, uh, architecture thinking and uh, representation of the ideas and uh, like crazy forms. Uh, it's uh, design oriented. So you have to uh, uh, start your design with uh, architecture thinking or concept uh, and then develop uh, these ideas. Uh, in the PhD journey, it's long journey. It's a marathon. So you have to keep running until the end. And this is the hard thing in the PhD, uh, especially first year when you come and uh, you have your field and you have your area that you want to experiment in. But when you uh, deep in into uh, papers and reading the papers and uh, articulating your path. So I think this is the hardest year in the B all the PhD journey. And then when you become familiar with uh, your uh, topic on your area, it's become easier and easier. But still, you have still you have to keep in the rhythm and you have to run uh, in that long journey. So it's it's a different. Uh, it's a different, uh, I can like uh, summarize the, the, with the word design and research, practice uh, and research or academic research. So the PhD, it's like more and uh, uh, learn how to publish, learn how to do you uh, research. Got it. Uh, I, I have a few questions on like, uh, process of applying for PhD, finding Vasim and that experience. But first, uh, will I know there's a, um, a lot of technical uh, content we are going to cover today. So I'll hand it over to you to cover your research and process and code. Okay. Hey. So uh, you want to start with the presentation and then or uh, Okay, let's let's uh, answer your question and the last question, which is how uh, I can get all these uh, the PhD uh, 
supervise and how I applying in that. So uh, today I will discuss uh, the graph machine learning using uh, topologic mod models. So DGCNN classification using uh, a large 3D topologic synthetic data set. Uh, really quick about me. Uh, as I said, I have bachelor's degree in landscape architecture and a master, and then now I'm doing my PhD. And uh, also I'm founder and coordinator ITAD research and design group, which is intelligent technology and architecture design. Uh, I have some application, which is uh, today mainly I will discuss the third, the second and the fourth uh, uh, publication, which is graph machine learning using uh, to the 3D topology. And then the new data, the building and ground scientific data, which is similar approach, with, but a uh, similar method, but with the different uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, database. And this paper, it's still uh, under review. The manuscript is still under review and hopefully it will publish soon. So what's graph machine learning? Uh, uh, graph, it's graph theory. It's branch of mathematics used. Uh, to model the relationship between objects. And machine, as all of we know, it's a concept of a computer program can learn and adapt new uh, data without human intervention. So I sum up these uh, two uh, uh, definition and I'm, a couple with, uh, I'm coming up with a graph machine learning definition, which is enable machine learning computer system to learn and adapt a new task using the graph uh, uh, theory. So uh, in the literature review, some researchers have focused into uh, uh, recognition of the 3D uh, models. So they try to have uh, image uh, like front view, side view, and top views, and all these image uh, 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 segmented, and then they uh, put it together to come up with the 3D uh, model. Uh, so uh, these, uh, this approach, it's still not capturing the 3D dimension and topological information uh, uh, embedded in the data. So it's an interesting approach, but still doesn't have that uh, uh, characteristic of the topology. And then uh, uh, some uh, papers, uh, they try to have the 3D models uh, the BIM 3D, sophisticated BIM 3D model, mechanical and electrical and plumbing uh, drawing, and then transfer them into uh, diagrams. So it's make it easier to understand. Uh, uh, house layout uh, generate, uh, uh, which is uh, GAN and GAN++. Plus plus. Uh, so they try to uh, embed the bubble diagram uh, uh, to the machine learning to transfer from uh, uh, graph, uh, graph, uh, th graph theory or graph into uh, uh, generate a layout of the house. So this is uh, GAN in 2020, and this is GAN++, which is similar approach uh, uh, into 2021. Uh, so uh, from my literature review, I found that uh, most of machine learning system Rely, uh, rely into the 2D pixels image. So they have the image and they pixelated to understand the, uh, uh, the task. So uh, the question now, if I want to classify uh, the relationship between building and ground, so we have an object and a ground, we have another object and a ground with the three different uh, relationship to the ground. So, uh, uh, we think it to have the uh, uh, 2D pixels image, it's hard to uh, classify uh, this kind of, of, of problem. So uh, for, 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 for many reasons, uh, one of the reasons, because now we have, I can clearly understand, okay, here the, class, the, the, the relationship between building and ground, it's interlock, but what about the behind? What about in the right? So uh, we need to understand the uh, 3D uh, topologic to uh, figure out the relationship or the correct uh, relationship. So it's hard to 
uh, find it from the 2D uh, image. So our contribution is from image-based to the graph-based uh, learning. So we transfer all the 3D models into a graph-based uh, 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 model uh, because we don't have uh, three data, are, uh, the, uh, no 3D, uh, 3D uh, data set are available. And even if we have these three data set, it's really hard to recognize, as I said. So we come up with the 3D synthetic data set to come up with, uh, to learn the uh, machine learning uh, model. Uh, the two important platform that we use to uh, uh, come up with this kind of classification, the topologic and the DGCNN. Uh, topologic, it's a 3D modeling software library. Uh, the, it's a plugin into Dynamo and Grasshopper uh, produced by Wasim Jabi and his team. And uh, I think Mayar, you are uh, uh, interviewed, already interviewed uh, Dr. Wasim. I think this is uh, if you want to have more about topologic, I think the, the, the videos or it would be a great uh, opportunity to have that. And then the DGCNN, which is end-to-end -end graph neural network that accept attribute of the graph without need to convert them into uh, tensor. So the, basically you need only the numbers, text file with the numbers, that uh, have the relationship uh, which, which each uh, node. And uh, we will explain that uh, later. So our uh, uh, work uh, flow, uh, we starting, number one, we starting with the generate the geometry. We come up with our uh, geometry using a uh, grasshopper and divide them and convert them into cell complex and divide and slice all these uh, 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 cell complex. And then we uh, start to using topologic to embedded the uh, uh, graph inside the, uh, the, the created uh, geometry. Uh, the third step, we try to iterate uh, all these kinds of iteration and automated uh, to create a large Synthetic data set with the several uh, topologic uh, uh, categories. Uh, after we done with all these creating the synthetic data set, we passed it to the machine learning model, uh, the DGCNN, uh, to train and test uh, to predict the topologies of the graph. Uh, uh, the uh, synthetic data set, uh, we label it. Uh, into two different way. Uh, we can have a three labeled graph and five labeled graph. So the three labeled graph, it's the ground, which is the zero. We can label the ground, so the green zero, podium, which is the yellow one, and the building hold the building, we graph it as a one uh, graph, which is two, one labeled, sorry, which is two. And we can do like more uh, labeled. So we come up with, uh, 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 dividing the tower into three different labels. So we have a lower and we have a medium and we have the height uh, of, of, of the tower. So we have now five labels of the graph. Uh, and then uh, we run the iteration and then we come up with uh, uh, a thousand uh, graph from uh, these, these geometries. Uh, the required format for the DGCNN, it, it has like a, a format need to do to, uh, to DGCN understand uh, the relationship or the, the graph. So uh, this is the kind of the format. So the graph, the G, the total of the number of the graph. For example, we have a thousand, or we have a 2000 graph, we have a 3000 graph. And uh, N here, it's the number of the vertices for every graph. So we have, for example, here, 109 vertices in that graph. And B, it's the, uh, the classification uh, or the label of the classification. So uh, for example, here it's zero, that's mean uh, building sit into the ground. If it's one, 
building have a podium. If it's two building have uh, like a, a without podium, would have a column. So this is the classification. Uh, uh, also, we have here uh, V11, uh, which is the vertices. So uh, let's give you an example. Here we have a two. So two, that means the vertices two, which is uh, the building. So we have the building. It's connected to two different vertices, which is 65 and six. Here, the ground zero, which is the ground. So the ground, it's connected to uh, uh, four different uh, nodes or four different nodes. So we have one, one of five, seven and five are four and so on. So when you give this uh, text file to machine, you will understand that two, it's the ground that's connected to two vertices and zero, it's uh, the, the, sorry, the ground is connected to four and so on. So this is the way the DGCNN will understand uh, uh, the graph. Uh, so, we, uh, yeah. yeah. So the classification Sorry. is at a uh, building level, like from like 109 and zero, like are, so if I understand there are like uh, features at node level, features at connectivity level, and like, are we doing classification at the whole building uh, level? We, we're doing the classification as the whole graph, what it's a whole building level. So yeah, something like this iteration, for example, it's, or let me show you one uh, clearer. Uh, yeah, something like this iteration, that's the building sit into the ground. So this is one uh, classification, one graph. Here we have the building into the podium and then into the ground. So this is another, uh, uh, graph, which is another uh, type of classification. So uh, he will not understand only the node. No, he will understand all the graph and all the node connectivity to generate the graph uh, classification. So we classify graph, not node uh, classification. Got it. And like, is the label for classification done automatically from topologic or it's manual? Uh, it's uh, from topologic and Python. I will show you how, how we create that uh, later uh, into mm -hmm. uh, Grasshopper. But uh, I think the main thing is topologic because topologic will embed the graph inside uh, this geometry. So, uh, and then you can just label them and, and that's it. Got it. Uh, so uh, yeah, after uh, that, we're doing the experiment uh, uh, result. Uh, we uh, we had uh, the best. We, we achieved the best result at uh, eight, uh, eighty-four. So Daniel, you were saying something. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, so the yeah, it's fine. So the best accuracy we have it's uh, eighty four point three uh, thirty three, and then we uh, achieve this result by uh, changing the some of the uh, uh, parameters of the DGCNN. So uh, we are trying to tweeting the training and testing uh, division ratio, uh, and we find seven hundred to three hundred uh, seventy to thirty. It's the best. Uh, 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 testing and uh, training uh, division. And then uh, we uh, change also the learning rate. Uh, we change the number of epochs for 500, 800, and 1,000. And then we change the batch size, which is uh, changing the batch, uh, but the, the batch size, it's uh, 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 effect into uh, processing time. So I think, uh, uh, two hour is not that long time to produce like a to, to, to learn the model. So we, uh, uh, I think uh, if we have something uh, 10 hours or 20 hours, we can uh, like uh, change the batch size to uh, have that uh, less amount of time uh, in the model. Uh, I, then, yeah. I have a sure. So it looks like the batch size when it's increased, the processing time decreases, but for 100, 
batch size it's again increasing uh where uh, 400 it's uh, 100 the last thing yeah so it's like from two hours it's going to 30 minutes and then again it's going to one hour uh yeah uh, this is this is the thing uh it's it's it, also, honestly it goes down and then it starts increasing uh i don't know why uh, this is the uh the processing time that i'm using uh the ordinary laptop uh, which is i think to i think basically the graph classification is not really hard uh classification task uh is not like an image recognition you need to uh, have every image recognized uh vaccinated it's it's a it's a tough got it uh the new section which is uh the new paper that's uh it's under review uh with the building and ground uh, scientific data set so now after we finish all the papers after we finish uh the uh, first uh, uh data set so now i'm uh, I, get, I try to have more sophisticated uh, data set and uh, it's related to the ground. Uh, uh, this is, it's, it's, it's totally related to the ground. So we have, for example, separation and separation on with the plinth. So uh, here we have like a columns, for example, and separated that building from the ground. And you can see the columns with the uh, dark, pink or purple and then the building with the pink and the core it's blue and the ground it's the green and then we have interlock so we can so like the buildings goes under the ground it's like interlock to the ground and we have adherence and adherence with the blend so the building it's just purely sit in the ground so no uh no uh, uh interlock or no uh, separation. Uh, so uh, these, uh, uh, this data, we have also a thousand graph. And then now I'm producing more, uh, uh, around 3000 or 4000 graphs. So we make it uh, really uh, like a, a complex uh, uh, to do to machine. Uh, so how, uh, how these workflows goes, uh, I start with uh, do, uh, to uh, create the geometry. So I start to do like the ground and the uh, interlock with building and the core adherence and separation with, with the columns, with the core and building and we create all the uh, geometry and then slice this geometry vertical and horizontal. So make it ready with the, to, uh, to make it a cell complex ready uh, to the graph. And then we insert to the topologic to transfer the geometry into topological uh, geomet uh, cell complex. Uh, and then we embedded the graph also using uh, the topology. And Python here uh, uh, helped me to uh, iterate all the iteration, the loop of the iteration. And then I use Collaborate to run this iteration. The, uh, yeah, uh, finally, uh, after that, we will have uh, another Python script that uh, transfer the data into text file, like you see the text uh, uh, file. Uh, so, and then the final thing, when we have all the thousand or all 2000 text file, uh, we will uh, give it to uh, the DGCNN. You can find the code uh, into uh, uh, his paper and then in the learning architecture. Uh, uh, we give all the, uh, the text file to the machine, uh, to the PyTorch, which is uh, graph uh, classification, the DGCNN. And then we run this code and we will get the, uh, the result. So you can see here clearly that uh, the batch size is uh, one. We can change also the batch size if you want. And the data, I, I name it as a DGCSLL. And then for example, here we have uh, one, uh, one, uh, uh, 29, 129 uh, hidden layer. 
and these hidden layer, uh, 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 like the structure of it, 32, 32, 32, and one confusion uh, layer. And here it's, uh, I have four classes. So building in the ground, building embedded in, so the four classes and the maximum node, it's five, which is podium and ground and a lower ground or lower building, medium building and high building. Uh, yeah, and then we run it and we will have the, it's, it's, it's really simple. The implementation in the DGCN, it's really simple. It just, uh, have your uh, data ready. Uh, if you have your uh, text file and you put them inside the file, you can just uh, write uh, the name of your file, DGCLNN, and run it. And you will have, uh, and yeah, he will ask you also to do uh, the splitting. So here we have training 800 and testing 200 and run that. So he will train the model and then it will test the model and it will give you the final uh, test uh, uh, accuracy. Uh, final thing, uh, if you wanna ask a question. Yeah, I was uh, about to ask that, do you need to do any uh, cleaning in the text file, like from topologic to make it compatible for DC, uh, like DGCNN? Like, do you have to remove some of the, parameters or no just when when you have your data as uh, it looks like that so uh, you will uh, in the python you will give uh, uh, every node numbers as we saw it mm -hmm. uh, here so if you have this file so you don't need to do anything you don't need even to clean them so just combine them in one file and absolutely you need to uh, shovel them. Don't do them like in an exact order. You need to shovel them uh, if you do it manually or if you do it with the, uh, it's, it's fine. Uh, or in the grasshopper, or it's fine. So you need to just shovel them and give them to uh, machine learning. Exact this format, it's really easy. It's, it's, uh, it's exact, yeah these format it's given inside the file. So it's nothing uh, much. Uh, final thing, uh, I will put this, uh, if you can put this uh, uh, image sorting workshop to the audience to, uh, to do it. This will be really, really helpful. And uh, uh, this is interesting uh, uh, task for a human to sort some uh, images uh, related to the building and ground uh, problems. So uh, I am trying to uh, see the difference between machine learning and human. So uh, if it's human, do it better than the machine learning and or human uh, or machine learning do it better. Uh, uh, until now, I finished two uh, workshop and this is the third one. Uh, the two workshop shows machine learning it's better mm -hmm. surprisingly so <laughs> i mean the percentage it's 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 not that big uh but uh, until now yeah this is the result that we have uh finally thank you for your time and thank you for your uh, uh interviews Meyer. and uh it's open for uh questions awesome abdul that's amazing work i love it um I had like question. So honestly, I feel like if Topologic is able to like uh, generate all the text file in the graph in the right format, that's like an ideal software, like ideal tool for graph machine learning research because you don't need to do any, a lot of like any post-processing for your data. And like, as uh, I think you said briefly that the script from the original paper, like if you have the data in right format, you could do like training without much challenges. So I think this workflow and the data set format is like, I feel might be a key challenge to the whole. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. I think it's it, uh, the uh, in the workflow, 
sorry for that. Uh, I think the scientific data set and the left part, it is the uh, important part uh, or important part uh, uh, because this is uh, the idea of the scientific data set and how you come up with the problems. It, 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 the scientific data set or this section, it is not only technical section, it's come from the theory and it's come from how, uh, uh, what's the problem? How, wh what's the problem in the building and the ground? And all these kind, it's coming to uh, data set and then we using machine learning to just lay at the, to develop the model that uh, help us to classification that's problem. So you're right. Uh, I spend all my time doing uh, this kind of thing and then two hours to run the uh, 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 machine learning. So yeah, uh, you're right. And I'm wondering, like, for example, if a person here just has like a BIM model, how can like uh, that BIM model can be integrated in this workflow? Because like there is first grasshopper part for data set generation. So mm -hmm. do I need to like tweak my model to simplify it? Because like- Exactly. The... Yes, uh, uh, you need uh, to uh, simplify the geometry and uh, how much you need to simplify this geometry, it's depend uh, into uh, your geometry. But uh, uh, the way that I, I'm doing it here, uh, I simplify the building into uh, different rooms, if you see it here, like a different rooms and two, three floors. So I simplify it, it just was one cell complex. So, uh, it's depend in you what you want to classify or uh, what's the, the, the problem that the building and ground, you want to classify the building and the ground and the relationship between them. But if you want to do the BIM, so what kind of BIM? If is it uh, 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 the me technical, the mechanical drawing? So you need to simplify the pipes and where is the nodes for uh, and the, uh, uh, and uh, so also uh, uh, we seem doing a lot of of of, uh, uh, of uh, session in in topology in, in in YouTube in his YouTube uh, to uh, for example doing the short path. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do the regress uh, escape or uh, the exiting from the uh, from the uh, the the building, so you need to have to, to find this the the path or the shortest path. So this is it's, it's a, a graph thing. So it's depending on your uh, issues classification problem. Uh, you need, yes, you need to simplify it, yes. And I think it's, it, that's why we do it here uh, in, in building ground, we do it in, into this way of, of uh, simplifying the building and ground. Because if you want to uh, go uh, and model uh, these sophisticated uh, information from the building, it's really hard and it, it's, it's uh, time consuming. And it's basically this building, it has like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 rooms. And then we have a columns and we have the ground. So this is the simple, uh, the simplification into uh, the model. So you don't need to have exactly uh, how uh, the facade looks and how is the wooden thing. So this is, this is, is not important information. I see. And are there like any outlier case like in your like uh, training, what were some uh, like models which were like not producing right result? Like what if the building is half half podium and like oh, half above ground and half underground? Like are there any like uh, error cases? Uh, yeah, we, we, we did it here. Uh, we have 
uh, yeah, something like this. So now we have the building, it's under the ground and half above the ground. So uh, yeah, the, the, he will understand, the machine learning will understand that because the, the, uh, uh, the ground or these nodes, it's connected here in there and uh, here in another thing. So the, uh, let's say the, how much, how, uh, how many nodes that connect to that node, it will make the difference. So it will understand the topologic of, of, uh, of uh, the building. So uh, yeah, now we have something like this and, uh, and further, I will do a uh, slope ground. So I'm working now in the slope ground and how this building, when it's become like slope ground, how is the relationship to that slope ground will be? So it will be different than this one. And what if we have uh, two level ground, which is topologies, so it's, it's like a topograph topographic, sorry. So we have two level ground, how this building will be understand. So this is the, uh, this is will be my dissertation next year, hopefully. Nice. And like, I'm also uh, pleasantly surprised that like the machine, like the train model is so accurate that it's also beating humans. So. Yeah, because uh, the person, that, that is, it's, yeah, here, here, here the thing. Uh, I have to go back and say it. It's beating the human in because I give it uh, 3D topological information, not a 2D, but if this is not, it's not fair comparison. <laughs> if I give a machine learning 2D image and human 2D image, I think the human for building and ground, I think the human will be better. But when you when I compare human 2D image with a machine, DGCNN, the DGCNN, give us more accurate results. I, I have to say is not fair comparison, uh, yeah. but yeah, but I mean the 2D image, it's really hard uh, classification, even for the human, because they will not understand what is behind the, uh, in the front views or in the back views or, uh, so they need the 3D. If I give a human a 3D, I think they will absolutely beat the machine learning. I see. Cool. And um, you mentioned about the hidden layers. I think there are also like uh, other classification models in graph. Like one is like CNN based, one is direct. Like, is there any particular reason you chose this model? Uh, I think uh, the uh, the deep graph neural network. It's uh, uh, the, the code is available and it's really easy to use. And uh, I found, yeah, you're right. There is a lot of kind of, of, of uh, graph um, uh, machine learning, uh, but this is, it's a simpler way to understand the task. The other uh, thing, uh, there is a paper, uh, well, I forget uh, what's the name of the paper, but they, they try to transfer the topology of the uh, of the like airplane or something or or bird or something to graph. So they have to do all the 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 shape of the mass of the airplane uh, into the graph. So this is, I think, it's 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 you you give it a three D. So you don't give it. Uh, cementing information embedded inside the, the topology. You give it the topology. So, and, and it has like a, a thousand of thousand of nodes, but this is the most cases here, like something like that. It goes until 120 uh, nodes, which is not that much. And I can simplify it too. I can simplify also the ground and make it just one node all the ground, just one node. So it's, it's, it can be simplified more. Got it. And uh, Daniel had a question about, is the data set publicly available? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the data set and also the, not, not that one, absolutely not that one. Uh, the first one, which is, uh, yeah, this one, it's available. And also the code and the Python, uh, 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 the, not the Python script, the Dynamo script, it's also available. Uh, but uh, not this one because this not the the building ground uh, because this is still uh, under review and it's still uh, will be in my PhD research so it will be available in uh, 2021. All right, awesome. Yeah, I'll I'll share the link in the video description. Can you, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to go to the flow, uh, workflow diagram. Okay, let me give you, oh, sorry. Let me give you this so you can uh, share it with the audience if you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, tell me. So if you go to like the workflow diagram. This one? Yeah. So. Okay. So you are creating the geometry and like from the geometry itself, like uh, is there like a if logic that if there's a podium uh, in the classification, give it like one or zero. Yeah, yeah, this is from the Python. Uh, the Python script, it has item list that it, it, it has like a, the item list or the call uh, from the item list here. So for example, we have a building topology we have two different building topology. So from here, the item list will call, will connect it to the Python. And if it's, uh, if it, there is a build, if, the, if it's, uh, there is, for example, if there is a plinth, please bring the plinth from here. If there is no plinth, don't bring the plinth. It give it zero. If there is a blend, give it one. So and that's on. So all these things it's coming from the Python. The Python it's uh, how he uh, select the ge uh, geometry. Will select the geometry and transfer it to the number zero one zero one. Got. And is there any like recommended size or for the cell complex, like how big or small? Uh, no, uh, actually, uh, 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 you don't need uh, uh, to, uh, there is no recommended. Uh, for example, in, in, in the ground here, I start with uh, seven by seven. And then when I run it uh, using Grasshopper, it's scratch multiple times and it's take a long time. So I try to uh, have it like four by four. Even uh, when we have a slope uh, uh, ground, uh, we have another kind of ground. So we will have more uh, 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 green dotted. So this is will make more complex and which will take forever. So uh, I can like simplify uh, the, uh, 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 the, the, the thing, uh, the, the nodes. Got it. But uh, you have to make sure, uh, don't simplify it to have like just one uh, ground, one uh, podium, one uh, building, and that's it. So this is like a really, really uh, simple uh, task. I see. And uh, if I'm not wrong, topology can also give like the area and the volume of this cell complex is a complex is right? Yeah, Grasshopper uh, using uh, help of topology, it can do everything you want. It can even open, if you want to open a picture in, into uh, this building and connect the graph into the picture. So we have another kind of labels, which is called windows. Uh, you can do it easily. And yeah, you can do anything you want. Even you can do uh, the area, the, even if you wanna embed it, the area inside uh, uh, the nodes. So it has like confirmation, this is third floor uh, with the area like 200 or something. So you can do it. 
I see. Because I was just thinking, like, if there are like all like also like a data for circulation, room, volume. One could also do like cost classification, whether like uh, buildings with a uh, podium are like how much expensive, or it's like more profitable or less profitable or something. Exactly. So you can you can do like a lot of kind of thing. Even you can do like uh, the environmental analysis. <coughs> Sorry, you can do like what you say, like the bath or the circulation uh, from the ground to the building into uh, separation. So how is what, what was the shortest path? Uh, if it's interlocked to the ground, or if it's separation. If you want to go to the classify the construction thing, uh, which is uh, environmental thing, uh, energy, uh, it's it's a lot of of, of uh, task you can classify from this kind of data or this kind of method. I see. Yeah. Uh, has anyone done like research of graph with uh, topology and um, energy analysis? Because that seems like pretty logical that you can like parametrically change the aperture size in grasshopper analysis, have the data and then do. Yeah, uh, uh, using graph, I don't think so, but using the uh, uh, machine learning, uh, the picture and the, 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 the amount of uh, sun that's cause. Yeah, there is uh, my teammate, Ammar Lamar. Uh, is is with the, uh, under uh, Wasim Jabi supervision too. He's doing exact uh, 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 same thing. Uh, the environmental analysis and how machine learning uh, will uh, uh, classify or predict the size of the windows or predict the size of of the uh, aperture. Awesome. Uh, now I'll see if there are like any questions from the audience. And on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us, like, out of all colleges you could apply, why you chose uh, Cardiff for PhD? Honestly, uh, 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 as I told you uh, before, I was uh, focusing in to develop my research skills. And I think UK, it's a great uh, place in, in developing your research skills. Uh, so I focus into uh, UK and then I try to find, uh, uh, this is the important thing in your PhD, you find best uh, supervised uh, to help you uh, in your area. And I think uh, Wasim was my uh, first uh, uh, first one in the to top of the list uh, in, in computational design and machine learning. So that's why I applied to uh, I applied to another uh, like a, uh, another schools, but uh, Wasim was the top of my the list. So that's why uh, in PhD, I think you have to. Uh, select your supervisor first and then the school. Uh, so I think the supervisor, it's really important uh, to be uh, selected and reviewed. For that one. And like, I can only imagine like it's, it would have been like a great pleasure working with him. Like he has amazing like books. He's quite right. like producing cutting edge research and like, he has developed software like topologic, so I, it's, I can only imagine. Yeah, and also I'm the first PhD student that work in topologic, so I'm really proud of that. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, awesome. So, yeah. Uh, can you tell us, like, how, how is, like, the workflow in PhD? So, yeah, do you think... meet him often? Like, how does that work? Uh, I meet him... Uh, Wasim, it's really open for a meeting. And this is the good thing. Uh, you can meet him every week if you want. Normally, uh, the students need to meet uh, his supervisor uh, twice a month. Uh, but Wasim, it's really open uh, for uh, meet more meeting. 
if he saw you, you are really exciting and want and producing something uh, exciting, he will work with you uh, weekly and you don't have mine. And uh, I think the first year it's the, for, for, for the all the PhD journey, I think the first year, as I told you, it's the uh, uh, harder year. You have to read and meet with him regularly every week, every week, every week. And he will, uh, from your, uh, uh, from your, uh, if you read and you give him papers and show him where your direction, he will lead you and he will give you some advice. Uh, second and third year, you have your own uh, uh, topic and you understand what you are, go what you're doing and what, how, how you want to do it, the method and everything. So now the supervisor will be helping you to, uh, not leading you, now it's helping you to, uh, to continue working in, in, in this uh, uh, method. So, yeah. I see. Yeah. Daniel uh, has a question, like where do you see some possible future extension of your work? Oh, this is, uh, uh, this is an interesting question. Uh, I think uh, there is a lot, a lot uh, 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 possible future uh, uh, work that can be done from these uh, kind of data. So uh, easily we can do like, for example, environmental analysis and we can see how it's uh, different from separation and interlock how uh, the sun, uh, the, the, the radiation, uh, it will be if we have separated the building from the ground or we embedded the building inside ground. So this is, I think, I think it's really interesting uh, uh, problem. Uh, also, uh, what if uh, we have uh, the plan, the layout inside the uh, every uh, uh, every cells or every rooms, and we can connect these uh, nodes for the bathroom and for the for the bedrooms and for the living rooms, and how we can uh, do a house that like the house again, but this time into the three D dimension. So with the relation with the ground also. So this will be a really sophisticated thing. So there is a there is opportunity. There is a, a, a well, yeah, you, you will see it in the dissertation, in the future work. We will have like a two or three pages for the future work. It's awesome. And uh, what is your piece of advice for people who are interested to do machine learning and PhD in or in their master's thesis? Uh, machine learning, it's a big field and it's, it's, it's I can't say not big, it's a huge field. So when I start uh, doing uh, my PhD, I don't have any idea about the machine learning. So you need to read a lot and you need to not, not just reading architecture paper. You need to read in uh, uh, machine learning paper, software papers, uh, urban design papers, and all of, of different fields. So you can understand the ability of the machine learning first. And then when you come to the technical issue, uh, this is another issue. You have to learn Python and you have to learn uh, uh, other softwares to uh, do the machine learning. So, uh, it's a tough, it's not really easy, but I think there is a huge opportunity in the machine learning, uh, in architecture uh, machine learning. Uh, I think we have enough uh, papers into history and we have papers into urban design, and, but the machine learning, it's new field. So we still uh, need to uh, more time, more uh, ex more research in this area. Got it. And other field, and other field, they are uh, 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 
they bath us in the machine learning, for example, in uh, hospitality or into uh, uh, the healthcare and all these, they're using machine learning and they're producing a lot of, of nice uh, information. So we need to, to follow up uh, with, with, with them. Yeah, like, I totally agree. Like there are like, other fields are like deploying it at like a big level. We are like right. in the initial phase and we are, it's, it's, we are catching up, but I also feel like, like in machine learning, there are like new research papers published every day. So there's a lot to catch up. So having like a good supervisor or a good group of people who can help each other is very useful. Yeah, like a group of people. And I have to give a credit uh, to all my uh, teammates, Amar and Hashim and all the teammates at Cardiff. We uh, regularly meet and sit and we discuss uh, the research. Uh, this is, this is, I think this is a really important thing to do in, in, in your PhD also. You have to sit and discuss uh, your work and listen to that advice from all, all of them. Uh, this is really an uh, important thing. Got it. And uh, what are some conferences you would recommend for people? Uh, yeah, uh, to read from the paper, you mean, uh, uh, or to publish? Like uh, who are interested to learn more and about like what are machine learning and architecture research work or to, to know um, what, uh, yeah. I think the three main, uh, for, I mean, for my knowledge, uh, the three main, uh, there, there's a lot, a lot of, pay, a lot of, of, of uh, conference, but SEMIAD, uh, ICAD, Acadia, uh, uh, the IGCI, I think of something like that. Uh, it's 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 a journal. It's really important. Simulation, uh, which is uh, this paper will be published in a simulation journal. So uh, there is a lot of of uh, of conference, uh, but I think mainly ICADI and Acadia, they have a good uh, 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 orientation into machine learning. So they oriented the the uh, uh, the the uh, the conference. Uh, to accept more paper into machine learning and AI, which is it's really interesting thing. Hmm. I'll definitely check those out. Uh, yeah. Daniel has uh, one question. So in Architecture Design Studio, we used to focus on diagrams to explain building concepts. Some example where like big diagram. Do you see this type of work to generate concept for buildings as well? Yeah, absolutely. This is the thing. Uh, uh, here, uh, the this kind of data it will help into the first stage of design. So uh, we call uh, this data it's uh, from first stage design concept. So you can easily uh, generate this kind of data uh, in into the first stage of design and then classify your. Uh, your uh, building or your concept in one of these, and you can go so and uh, deep and and have more example and more example uh, from it. So yeah, this is uh, mostly from the conceptual uh, work because it's still it's a conceptual. If you can see it, it's a conceptual uh, diagram. Interesting. And like, I know, like, we could just go on and on, but um, I have a yeah. few light questions to uh, end the interview. So how does a day in your life look like? So uh, uh, my day life. So this is an interesting question. So I wake up and I get my coffee. This is the first thing I have to do. Uh, and I then uh, read some uh, uh, papers, uh, article papers and uh, uh, conference papers to keep, uh, uh, to keep myself up to date. So this is a really important thing to keep yourself uh, in, 
in, in, inside and up to date. And then I went to my gym, to, I'll, I'll go to the gym. This is important thing to do, health. And then when you come back, you come back with the fall of energy. So uh, after coming back, I can do like two different tasks, even writing, writing the dissertation or writing the paper or writing anything or uh, producing the simulation and uh, grasshopper thing. So uh, yeah, this is mainly. And then after uh, 10, absolutely I go and have some fun playing Call of Duty. And then, yeah, at, at like 12, something like that, I'm done with the, with the day and going to the bed. Awesome. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. Yeah, like physically you have like a very well-built body. So I was yeah, assuming you, 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 you are going to gym regularly. You, you, you have to do it. You have to do that. Uh, it's it's gives me a lot of energy and give me, uh, it's clear my mind when I come up, when I come after uh, the gym, I can uh, work with the clean uh, mind. Yeah, and I also feel sometimes like creative ideas come when you are just doing like in the shower or in the gym, thinking about some other things. Exactly. Exactly. Sometimes you think in the gym uh, a lot about you. What What are you doing and how you will do it? And and yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Awesome. And what are some books like? It could be architecture or other field which were really uh, impactful in your life? Ah, okay. So honestly, before my PhD, I wasn't that good reader. I have to admit that. But when I start the PhD, I start reading a lot. Uh, I think uh, uh, there is a books, it's, it's really important books. It's called uh, uh, Tom Bernand Lexon for uh, building a ground relationship. And there is uh, another book called uh, Shape the Environmental. Uh, it's, it's a good book also. Uh, I'm more into uh, the books that have a theory of, of, uh, of different fields of multiple fields, like for example, landscape, architecture, urban design. Uh, I, I, I like that this book when, when it's talk about build, why, why I'm choosing building ground, because I think this is really important uh, problems. Uh, and these problems, it's become when you be landscape architecture and it's, it's, it's there when you urban designer and it's there when you, uh, architecture and also it's there when you uh, civil engineering uh, or structure engineering so uh, something like this I like to read the interdisciplinary work That's so these awesome. two books is really important for me also uh, our same Jabi books it's a good book by the way so it's, 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 a, it's a coding uh, book so mm -hmm. yeah I have read his like book on parametric design. Yes, is that the book? Yes, the parametric design. That's what I'm talking about. It's uh, how to uh, uh, doing parametric design using uh, uh, code in the 3D Max. So uh, I'm uh, hopefully doing uh, uh, other version. How use it, how to doing parametric design using. Uh, Python in the grass suburb. So this is it's, oh, now, now the Python in the grass suburb. It's 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 open. It's interesting. I I have to check that out. It's now when you were explaining about the building and ground, I like I was now like I was relating to your research work, which also like explores building ground relationships and the dots were connecting. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the last question I have, like, sure. uh, uh, what are the places on your like to-do list for travel? 
Uh, in UK, you mean, or? In general, like, I'll leave it open-ended. Uh, I think uh, I will be biased, but uh, I think Los Angeles, it's an amazing city. And also Boston, I was in Boston, so like a year and a half. I love Boston. Boston, it's close community, and the, the, the has like exactly like Cardiff. So uh, Boston, it's called uh, in New England. So it's like England. It's like here. Mm. So uh, I love Boston. Uh, London, it's my. This is this is the best city I have ever seen. Uh, the other way, Los Angeles, because Los Angeles, it's it's different uh, style. Uh, yeah, it's totally different style. I like Los Angeles. So I told you I will be biased. So this is the place <laughs> that I went. So. <laughs> <laughs> and like, what do you like the most about London? Is it the cultural? Uh, yeah. it's... London, it's mixed. It's mixed. Uh, like New York and Boston and Los Angeles, it's 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 a nice mix. It has uh, a commu close communities and it's big. And uh, they have like a big club there. Uh, uh, the, the arsenals and all all these things. So it's it you can when you go there. You can do every all the thing, everything you want to do. So it's it's a it's a I like it. Even even that it looks historical. Um, some part it looks luxury, and some part it looks history. And it's it's a it's a nice combination. So everything for everyone, I see. Yeah, exactly. And the food there, it's amazing, man. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And lastly, like, do you plan to become professor after PhD or join the uh, profession? Yes, yes, I was uh, 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 I was working as a, a lecturer uh, in uh, uh, Al Faisal University in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, and then I will hopefully to come back uh, uh, there as a, a professor, assistant uh, professor. So yes, this is I think also. I am uh, doing now a small firm. It's called ITAD, uh, I should, uh, ITAD Group, which is design and research. And I want to implement my design uh, or my research uh, into a practice. And yeah, for example, how we can use uh, uh, machine learning to produce plans for the practice. So. Uh, I can give the uh, client not just one uh, plan. I can give him like a ten plans with the two with the different uh, solution. So I'm I'm trying to introduce my research into the practice there. So uh, this is the firm now. It's it's still quiet. It it will be after I graduate. I will focus more in there. Got it. It was really nice talking with you, Abdul. Thanks a lot for yeah, I'm, sharing I'm, your I'm, knowledge. I'm really happy to talk to you. And uh, I saw all your videos uh, in the YouTube and I learned a lot from them. So uh, keep it up. Thank you. This, Thank this you. made my day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Have a nice rest of your evening. You, you too. You too. Thank you, Daniel.